In Heartland Season 17 Episode 5, Jack and Amy prepare Blue for a competition. Lissa manages a challenging loss. Lou betrays Jessica in their collaboration at the gallery. Katie purchases a used dirt bike covertly. Want to know just what happened during it? Here is everything you need to know about Heartland Season 17 Episode 5. The episode started with Jack Tim and Amy herding cattle. When Jack's new neighbor, Nathan Price, arrived, he told Jack how well he and Blue were together and that Nathan would face fierce competition at the Working Cow Horse competition that weekend if Jack went too. Naturally, Jack was the first to respond that he was too busy to compete. But the more he considered the competitors, the more appealing the notion seemed. Jack was confident that he wanted to enter the contest after practicing with Blue. Jack even seems incredibly eager to demonstrate Blue's abilities. And Blue appeared energized too, carrying out Jack's orders with flawless precision. However, it became evident that Jack wouldn't be able to make it to Braeburn that weekend after Lisa received some unfavorable news. Jack urged Amy to participate for him because he didn't want to let Blue down, who appeared to be just as eager to compete as he was, and because he wanted to defeat Nathan Price, since his competitive nature was showing through. Amy was initially a little hesitant, and her reluctance further increased when Blue showed Amy that he might actually be a one cowboy horse by making Amy feel uncomfortable when she began working with him. Amy vowed her grandfather to keep trying, even though Jack was prepared to call it off since he didn't want to watch his granddaughter suffer because of a contest. Jack seemed to truly want Blue to have this opportunity. Fortunately, Blue finally warmed up to Amy, and by the time the show concluded, Amy and Blue were collaborating as a team. Though perhaps not quite as cohesive as Jack and Blue, Blue undoubtedly had Amy's trust and paid attention to all of her cues. All that's left to do is wait for the upcoming episode, which will include the competition itself. It will be interesting to watch since we're used to Amy being effortlessly good at everything horse-related, and it sounds like this competition will take quite a bit of effort for her. Additionally, we know from the Gates video of the Fan Day event, where scenes for this competition were filmed, that Amy will really be stepping out of her element for this competition. Lisa was dealing with a significant loss at this time. Her ex-husband Dan Hartfield had passed away. Even more shocking to Lisa than the news itself was the fact that she had to hear it from none other than Val Stanton. Thus, we witnessed Lisa's struggle throughout the episode to come to terms with Dan's departure and her feelings about it. Even Lisa didn't seem to know what her wife needed at that particular moment, despite Jack's best efforts to support her through her suffering. Lisa was first irritated by the way the news had come to her, and it soon turned into resentment at Dan for not even reaching out to let Lisa know he was ill and allowing her to say farewell in a dignified manner. However, it was also evident that Lisa was in pain beneath it all, a great deal. After all, Dan had been a significant part of her life for many years, they had a long marriage, and they had founded a company together. Even though Jack offered to accompany her, Lisa initially refused to attend Dan's funeral because she was unsure of how to manage his passing. It was during their conversation that Lisa seemed to finally comprehend how she feels and what she wants to do about the funeral. Jack reminded his wife that while there may have been difficult moments in Lisa and Dan's marriage, there were also happy times. As a result, Lisa eventually opened up to her husband the following day when Jack went to speak with her. Though still grieving over Dan's passing, Lisa appeared to be in some ways lighter after that breakthrough chat. Ultimately, it transpired that Dan did bid Lisa farewell in his own unique manner. An envelope was on the porch when the two saw it on their way back to the house from the pond where they had their chat. Lisa was the recipient of it. It came from Dan, too. Upon opening it quickly, Lisa discovered a framed photo of a newspaper, clipping with the words, We can only go up from here, printed in red. This frame had been hanging on the wall in Lisa and Dan's workplace, Lisa told Jack. It was a newspaper clipping showing the outcome of the first race that their first horse together entered. It didn't matter that the horse had in last either because, as the lyrics stated, they could only go higher from there. They decided to hang the framed clipping as a memento of their beginnings. This was a very difficult story for Jack, as well as a very tragic one for Lisa. However, it only appeared to strengthen the couple's bond in the end. Additionally, they were able to sort of settle the Dan problem at last, which had always been a source of friction in their relationship whenever Dan came up in conversation. Thus, for Lisa and Jack, this was actually a fresh start and a point of closure. Lou was having difficulties following her defeat in the mayoral election in Episode 2. However, in Episode 3, a fascinating new business possibility in the shape of Jessica's art gallery emerged. 
and Jessica consented to Lou being her gallery partner after they had overcome certain obstacles together. But given that the partnership had a rough beginning, it's understandable that difficulties persisted throughout this episode. And a lot of this episode was Lou's fault. Lou hurried out of the house at the beginning of the episode, saying she was running late. We quickly discovered why. Lou missed their meeting with the bank to discuss a loan for the gallery, it seems, because he had overslept. Naturally, Jessica was not thrilled with Lou, because Lou had already rescheduled the meeting once and then neglected to show up, leaving Jessica to handle the bank manager alone. Furthermore, the bank would not provide them with the necessary loan to refurbish the space, nor would any other bank. Lou decided to mend it. She thought that by involving Rick, they would be able to obtain the necessary funding to open the gallery. It appears, though, that Jessica wasn't the only one who found Lou to be a bit irritating. Since it appeared that he had permitted the former mayor to utilize her connections for personal advantage, Rick was also not pleased that Lou had gone behind his back and thrown her weight around to get Jessica the permissions she needed to start restoring the building from the Heritage Committee. Fortunately, Lou finally acknowledged her mistake and expressed regret for not consulting Rick beforehand and following the correct procedures to obtain the permissions. Once Rick accepted her apology, she shared with her buddy her suggested solution, obtaining the necessary funds through an arts and culture grant. The gallery was immediately granted approval for the grant because it was a prime candidate for funding, drawing in tourists in addition to being a heritage structure under restoration. However, there was a catch. They couldn't just showcase Jessica's artwork at the gallery. And after Rick informed Lou of this requirement, which Lou subsequently told Jessica, the two business partners argued once more. When Jessica believed that they had agreed that Lou would handle the business side of things and Jessica would be more in charge of the creative part, she was having trouble with Lou interfering in the creative side of the gallery. Lou, on the other hand, wanted them to be equal partners in the gallery in every way and was unaware that it had been their agreement. As a result of their disagreements, Jessica asked Lou to attempt to renegotiate with Rick regarding the grant. In response, Rick informed Lou that the funding would not be awarded until they displayed the work of other regional artists at the gallery. Jessica reluctantly agreed to accept it when it became apparent that there was no other grant or way for them to receive the money they needed to rebuild the building. Furthermore, Jessica began to view the award and its accompanying stipulations favorably with some prodding from her spouse. Even while Lou did offer Jessica the option to exit the partnership that she so desired, by the end of the episode, we witnessed Jessica and Lou resolve their differences and recommit to one another as partners. It was great to watch Jessica adjust to the circumstances and truly see the grant as a benefit, as well as to have Lou acknowledge that it's difficult to have her as a business partner. Now, I don't think Lou, Jessica, and the gallery will have an easy ride from here. Indeed, the eight-episode description mentions that the two friends would have to deal with a stressful gallery opening. But given what they've previously been through, I have no doubt that they can triumph over any storm the gallery throws at them. Katie was thinking about getting a dirt bike as a new buy while the adults in her life were busy taking care of their own issues. We saw Katie broach the topic of her trying out dirt biking with Lou early on in the episode. Lou swiftly disregarded Katie's suggestion, stating that it was too risky. Tim made a valid point when he informed Lou that at Katie's age, it was likewise deemed risky for her to ride horses and jump over barriers twice Lou's height. Lou, meanwhile, remained firm on the subject. But Katie, being the disobedient teenager that she is, made the decision to get a dirt bike nevertheless. Since dirt bikes are expensive, she decided to pawn a necklace Lou had given Katie for her birthday. With the money she earned, she was able to purchase a second-hand fixer-upper from the local store. Katie then started trying to hide the bike from all of the ranch staff. However, it didn't take long for someone to come across Katie and her new acquisition. However, Katie was lucky that Tim noticed her wheeling the bike behind a shed. Katie kept telling Tim that he can't tell Lou about the bike, because at first she was afraid of what her grandfather would think, and if he would say anything to Lou. However, Tim persisted in telling Katie that he wouldn't, and that she needed to inform her mother instead, even offering to assist her in fixing it. And as it happens, Tim's mechanical skills are rather decent. He started the bike up very quickly. And by the end of the episode, Katie was riding into the sunset with her grandfather watching over her shoulder. Tim is Katie's ally at last when it comes to dirt biking, which makes me very happy. She used to handle everything alone, having no one to turn to in case something went wrong. At least she has Tim now though, and ideally, Tim will be there to encourage Katie throughout what will undoubtedly be a contentious conversation 
when it comes time to tell Lou about her new interest. It was intriguing to observe that Rick and his family suffered the same consequences for becoming mayor that Lou experienced throughout her tenure. Lou got Rick to tell when she noticed a pillow and a blanket tucked under the couch in his office. And as it turned out, Rick's personal life, and particularly his relationship with Carl, his partner, had taken a serious hit ever since he was elected mayor. Rick had even been expelled from the house by Carl. After having a wine night and discussing the situation, Lou, who was devastated to see Rick in such pain, decided that Rick needed to locate a chief administrative officer for himself. Naturally, Rick proposed that Lou accept the position, and to be honest, I consider that as a potential career path for Lou as well. Lou, though, declined Rick right away. It would never work with their personalities, and with good reason. Lou truly needs to take a step back and address her emotions rather than getting back into a cycle of excessive business that prevents her from finding time for herself, especially considering how difficult it is for her to figure out what's next for her. After all, Tim and Jessica were beginning to suspect that Lou wasn't quite right. However, it was incredibly sweet to see Lou set up a date night for Rick and Carl, where Lou would take care of baby Maddie and give the two of them some much-needed alone time. It was a kind gesture on Lou's behalf, even though I doubt we will witness the real date or Lou's mischievous antics as a babysitter.